Um, this is the E222. Um, we were looking, yesterday we were looking at um, half adders and full adders. Alright, half adders and full adders. Um, just the first thing up, um, um, we want to once again remind you all that the, um, that the short test will be um, tomorrow at 11 o'clock right the short test tomorrow will be uh, uh, at 11 o'clock um, yeah the short test is at 11 o'clock and uh, please be on time um, please um, the room uh, that's the room next door all right please be uh, uh, please be before time uh, waiting before time because there will be a class which will come out around about 10 minutes to 11 or 5 minutes to 11 and um, please arrange yourself so that you have uh, one, one sp space between each of the seats all right okay um, we don't want to spend time in arranging and getting people up and down we want to get this uh, test over and done with all right um, um, the uh, uh, the test will last for 50 minutes. Is there another test tomorrow? Yeah, I think the hour immediately after that, right? Okay, so we will finish the test. Uh, it will be a 15-minute test. The test is very, very easy. It's nothing out of the surprise. Uh, everything is uh, from within the lecture notes or from within the tutorials. And of course, maybe in the lecture notes, you like for example, if in the lecture notes they say, convert the decimal number 38 uh, to hexadecimal maybe in the test it might not say 38 it might say convert the decimal number 35 all right so all the problems which you've done in the tutorials and all the problems which you've done in the uh, uh, lecture notes we've done a lot of problems in our lectures so our lectures are somewhat like a half tutorial right we do lots of problems in our in our lectures so please go through all of those and you should uh, be able to score very good marks in your in your um, in the um, short test all right um, but yeah you have to be quick you can't be um, the short test has got I think seven questions seven questions and um, you need to know your boolean algebra we won't give you the rules you need to know if somebody asks you hey what is uh, if somebody asks you what is the rule distribution rule or distributive rule or what is De Morgan's theorem you should know that already okay you should uh, you should know that already all right okay <coughs> okay so um, As a guide, you may want to have a look at this particular paper. This, if, even though it's a totally different thing altogether, this is the final exam paper. As a guide, um, you may want to have a look at some of this stuff over here. All right, but I think there's only one question which is sort of relevant. Uh, I'm pretty sure question one you have not done yet. That's week seven, week eight sort of thing. Question two is relevant. Question three, you have not done. Question four, no. Question four, C, yeah. Question five, no. Yeah, so that's, that's one paper which you can look at for revision. And already this week, uh, in this week's tutorial, you will notice that in this week's tutorial, we have given uh, last year's midterm test as, um, we have given uh, last year's midterm test as, um, the uh, uh, as a tutorial all right so please make sure you go through that all right it follows the same format and all but new questions altogether all right i mean uh, we change the numbers and all that sort of thing okay all right so um the lecture which we were looking at
Okay, so we were looking at adders, eh? All right. So, you know, we went through adders. There's something called a carry out. The carry out of the right hand column becomes the carry in of the left hand column, right? Okay, so that's, that's how it works. Um, and there's something known as a half adder. A half adder can only do, if you've got a complicated something like this, it can only do this column over here. That's the problem with the half adder. All right. So in order to fix the problem, that's the binary addition rules. And we've discussed this much, much early on. Right? We did this uh, tooth table. Uh, then we looked at the circuit of the half adder. It's a very important circuit. Then we looked at uh, the binary, the full adder. Right? To fix, you see, the half adder in a problem like this can only cater for this column over here, the rightmost column. Because there's no carry coming in, if you look at it, there is no carry coming into this rightmost column. So the half adder can handle that column. A half adder can output a carry, but it's not able to take in a carry. So then what we had to do is we had to devise a new system of A plus B plus carry in is equal to sum plus carry out. Right, uh, and so we did this tooth table over here. All right, um, and um, let's have a look at the tooth table. I'm going to flip over to the to the document camera. That was our tooth table, right? We derived it using basic rules of addition. Right, basic rules of addition. All right, now the next step. What's the next step? Right, we want to find a, a, a circuit for sum and a circuit for uh, carry out. Okay, now have a look at this system. This system has got three inputs and two outputs. It's got three inputs and two outputs. So for each output, there will be one circuit. For each output, there is a separate circuit because it's a separate output. Okay, so for each output, there is a, a separate, a separate circuit. Okay, so let's. Uh, so that's our our particular thing. All right, uh, everything goes well. Let's now. Let's now put this into some form of algebraic. So what is the circuit for sum? Well, you can't just derive a circuit just like that. There's a ways to do it. So one way to do it is to do it to sum of products, right? But that makes a very large circuit. A sum of product circuit is not minimized, right? You can do product of sums. That's not minimized either. It's just a two-step process. It's very quick to do, but it's not minimized. It's not economical. We want an economical circuit, right? So maybe we do Kano maps. Let's do it on Kano maps. All right. So we now apply Kano maps to this. So uh, your tooth table should be there. All right. Now let's do the Kano map for sum. <coughs> okay. So that's three inputs. Yeah, three inputs. So therefore we can have a two by. We can put A, B over here, and we can put C in over here, right? 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and 0, 1. C in has only got two options, yeah? So that's a 4 by 2 kind of map, right? 4 by 2 kind of map. Okay. Now, um, if you want, we can label it. If you want, we can label it, but hey, Let's have a look at this. I'll show you this. Let's now come back to our table. Unfortunately, on, on my thing, it's on the other side of the page. So I'll just zero, zero, zero. So that's one, one, zero, one. Okay. All right. Okay. I hope you've got this table somewhere near the Kano map. If there's some space, try and put it, put put the Kano map beside it. All right. Okay. So zero a is zero b is zero c in is zero. What do you get as the sum? Zero. Right. Okay. Next. Um, let's try A0, zero, B0, zero, C in is 1. You get 1. Uh, A0, zero, B is 1. Look at the tooth table. And from the tooth table, basically, we are prescribing. Yeah, A0, B is 1. C in is 0. We get a 1 again. Uh, we're looking at the sum column. Yeah. Okay. A0... B is 1, C in is 1. If you look at the tooth table, the, the fourth line, yeah, C in is, I mean, the sum is 0. All right. Now let's do another one. A is 1. Let's do this column here. B is 0. 
and C in is 0. That's the fifth line of the truth table. Sum is 1. A is 1, B is 0, C in is 1, therefore sum is 0. <coughs> A is 1, B is 1, C in is 0, you get a 0. And A is 1, B is 1, C in is 1, you get a sum of 1. Yeah? Right, so that's the, that's the counter map for the sum. Can you see I did it for the sum? So, um, I want you to see this pattern over here. And you can, you know, um, I, I, I want you to know that. So, over here... Tell me, is there any, look at that Kano map, is there any way of plugging in any one with a partner? No, it seems in this particular case, in this particular case, all the ones are alone. Yeah, there's no other, there's no partners, you can't, you can't make a group of larger than one. There's no groups of two, yeah, in this particular case. Now, um, you can go ahead normally i just i just let you know that okay we can then come up with sum is equal to all right so that'll be a bar b bar c in or a bar b c in bar or a b c in or a b bar c in bar so that's a long expression. And this is one of the unique cases where your Kino map, when you have this particular pattern. Have you seen this, this particular pattern? This particular pattern is known as the... Um, this particular pattern is known as, um, uh, they call it the checkerboard. Um, They call this pattern. Can you see the checkerboard pattern? Can you see it's like a one zero? It's like alternate. Did you guys, did you guys play? Oh, in Fiji they don't call it checkerboard. They probably call it draft. Yeah, when you if you a draft board. You know we used to play draft. Okay, uh, how many of you guys remember playing draft? Right? Yeah. So you have the black black portion and the red. Yeah. So if you look at it, uh, it's one zero. Can you see it's all opposite, opposing pattern. When you have a kind of map as that, you may follow your own uh, original what we taught you and say, hey, this is the equation. It so happens that in that particular pattern, this is this whole thing. When you have a checkerboard pattern, right, it's this. Okay. A X O B X O C in, right? Okay, that's the checkerboard pattern. The moment you have a checkerboard pattern on a Kano map, that is the particular rule. And maybe as an exercise, you can write this down. Prove that that is equal to this, which derives down to that. Well, from here, you know, you guys can you, you can do some Boolean theorem and all that. But remember, what is A X O B? Write this down somewhere in the corner there. A X O B is, a, and we've done it already. A X O B is the same as saying A bar B or A B bar. Just remember that, eh? And that's how we got this. Okay? All right. So this is a checkerboard pattern. All right. So that there, that's the story for our sum. So our sum was A X O B X O C in. All right. Okay. Can you see the X O is still? playing the game for the doing the job for the sum yeah if you look at our earlier circuit right now let's have a look at what about a c out remember our truth table had two parts there's a sum and there's a c out so we need another circuit another boolean expression for c out <coughs> so obviously we do it again another kind of map A, B, C in. Remember, the inputs are always the same. 
if you look at the truth table, the inputs are the same. It's only the output. We're choosing a different output now. A, B, C in. You have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And you have 0 and 1. Okay. Now, I want you to now go through the truth table and let me know where are the ones. You can do many ways of doing this, right? One way would be we can label the windows, we can label the cells 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then from the tooth table pick it up. Right from the tooth table, it seems that okay, that's number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 3, 5, 6, 7. So that's 3, 5. I'm getting something out of that. That's how I did it. I did it using the sum of min terms, like the you know the sum of min terms, right? From the sum of min terms, those are the addresses which link to the to the Kano map cells, right? Or you can just go directly from the tooth table. You don't need to. The sum of min terms is like an intermediate step. If you are skillful enough, you can do the direct thing, right? Okay. All right. Okay, so hey, in this particular case, I think that's a group. Rather than making this a group of one, we put that like that and we put this guy there. So there's three groups, three groups of two. And eventually we end up with C out or carry out is equal to, that's A, B or that's... Um, looks like BC in or AC in okay Okay. But have a look at this over here. We deliberately we deliberately want to use an XO. Let me let me let me show you the circuitry. Let's go back. So that part was quite easy, straightforward. Now we'll do a bit of um, bit of uh, um, uh, Boolean algebra to loop around and, 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 and use some of these rules to our advantage. Okay, let's flip over to the PC now. Okay. Okay, now you see that was uh, the tooth table which we did yesterday. We've done the Kano maps and we've done the extraction already, right? Okay, uh, and that's the circuit of a full way ADA. It would be ideal, so if you look, just look at this top left hand corner. The full header is made up of three inputs, right? Which are your A, B and C in and two outputs. Ideally, our, our three, our full header, it would be nice if we could make half headers and then plug the half headers in, right? So many half headers we could plug in in order to make full headers, right? So um, but the problem is, the problem is this. Let's have a look at the equation for the full header. If you look at the equation for the full header for the carry out, can you see that for the carry out it's AB or BC in or AC in. There is no XO over there. There is no XO. There's XO over here in the sum equation, but there's no XO. So we get a bit stuck. So we would like, so our objective now. So over here we've got this situation. We would like, we want, 
to use EXO inside the CEO circuitry. Why? Why? Why do we want to use the EXO? Why can't we just use the end and I mean, see it's A and B and O, there's O, B and C in, O, A and C in. Why can't we just end and O? Why? Because if we are from a manufacturing point of view, remember, you guys are engineers, from an economics point of view, it's easier to make a single item, right, a unit uh, like a, what they call modularity. Like for example, in reality, cars could have been more efficient if the rear tires, uh, oh sorry, the front tires are slightly larger than the rear tires, right? But for modularity and for easy manufacturing and you know standardization, all tires are then made the same. You want modularity, which means you can, if something happens to the rear tire, you take the back tire, put it in the front, that tire, so you're always buying the same tires. You're not saying, oh, my rear tire, so I need this size tire for the back and this size tire for the front. No, you're not doing, you're not playing any games like that. It's all a standard size, right? So, um, if it'll be easier, rather than having different sorts of circuit, different sorts of circuits for the sum, the sum was using what? XOR, and your carry out was using ORs, it would be easier for us to just manufacture lots and lots of half headers because a half header is used inside a full header and then you you hook it up right and then you hook it up okay hook up half header with another half header and you make a full header then you take this full header you hook this full header up with another full header then that makes it a two bit header then you hook that up with a third one that makes it a three bit header and if you want to do let's say 16 bit Edition, you want to make a real deal calculator which can do 16 bit edition, then you just hook 16 of these circuits up, each of them having lots of half headers. Right? Okay? Rather than using different sorts of circuits. The moment you start to use different sort of things, then things become difficult. That's why we wanted to move to something called NAND NAND realization. Remember this word NAND NAND, N E N D dash N E N D. We wanted to build everything using NAND. OR gates using then uh, um, what do you call <coughs> end gate and not gate everything using then because there's one type of chip and then you're just recycling it here and there right okay all right so so let's have a look at this so we want to use an XOR gate so our objective our objective our objective is that we want our CEO to equal to A and B or C in A, X or B. We want to get here. This is the objective. I'm not saying that's the answer, but we want to rewrite this guy, do some things with it over here so that it ends up here. We want that XO. This XO is important. It's like you're a soccer team, you're a football team or a rugby team, and in order for your team to win, even though you've got a team now, in order to make it an economical team or a winning team, you need a particular player, which you don't have any, uh, you know, you don't have any expert. Let's say you don't have a winger, right? You have some other guys, but they're not really good wings. So you need a winger, a really a professional uh, a guy who, who is a good winger. So what do you do? You import. You have to do some magic. Maybe spend some money, do this and that. So that's what we're going to do. Right? So our objective is we want to achieve this. So let's go ahead and do this. Right? So what do we have? We know for sure. We know for sure this is what we have. That A, after doing the tooth table analysis and Kano maps, we know for sure that the equation is like this. No doubt about that. This is the real deal. That's what you have right now. We want to transform that and somehow or the other you see in. But we want to achieve this. Because of the XO. 
All right. Okay, so if we have an XO, uh, I just want to say, hey, the definition of XO is that would be a bar, a b bar, or a bar b. Okay. Okay. Um, now let's have a look at that Kano map again. Let's have a look at that Kano map again. If we now re-look at that Kano map, eh? A, B, C, N. Okay, and it was here, right? Am I correct? Something like this? And we said, hey, we'll make three loops. We'll make three loops. How about I deliberately, I deliberately, this is like, it doesn't happen in Fiji, it doesn't happen in the Pacific, but in the US, teams trade players. Tre you know, in the US, in the, in the sports market, football, baseball, they trade players. They say, hey, I'll give you this rookie, um, or I'll give you this, uh, this is a batsman, or this, is, uh, this guy's a runner, right? And um, you give me that guy. Yeah, or he gives you that guy, that team takes that one, and that, there's a transfer window open, and they do, they play around, they, 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 they shuffle players around. Right, and the the coaches they 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 try and assemble the best team possible to meet the objective, which is to win. Right, so they look at their deficiency and they say, hey, "That team there has got a good player." Right, so they do some maneuvering. Right, if you watch U.S. Uh, U.S. sports baseball or American football, you'll see uh, uh, they, they they do a lot of this. Right, to to move players around, um, sell players, they trade players. Uh, this player goes to that team for $10 million, but then with that $10 million, they go and buy two of these players from another team, which is very promising, right? So those two players, then they develop and they say, okay, we can win, you know, more. We can save the season or something. All right, so let's maneuver this. Originally, we had to do this, right? So we trade. Deliberately, we make a deliberate mistake on our Kano map. We make a deliberate error on our Kano map. Right? It's not an error, it's just that the objective of the Kano map was to get the the objective of the Kano map is to get the most minimized function. And the most minimized function is made by making groups as large as possible. Right? So it's like you've got money, you're going to buy the best player possible for your team. But rather than buying two best players, how about we buy two uh, using the, the $10 million, rather than buying, paying $10 million for, let's say, the very best player, right? How about we split it into two $5 million and get two above average players, right? B plus players, right? And rather than going for one A plus player, you go for two B plus players. And just in case, because if that one A plus player gets injured, your season's down the drain. So you've got two B plus players, at least you've got something going still, right? So this is what we are doing. So let's now look at this. It'll still give you the correct, the, this Kano map will still give you a function, except for it's not minimized to the best. Our earlier thing was minimized to the best. So if we now look at this, this is, uh, hey, that's, uh, what was this? Uh, C out, right? C out is equal to, that line is the same, A, B, or that's C in, a bar B, right? C in A B bar. Yeah, from here. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so that's that's something which is looking very familiar now because if we expand that. That is the same as that. So let's just do the Boolean algebra and just prove everything one go now. Scene is equal. So uh, that sort of proves it using Kano maps. Can you see this line here is the same as that. And it's the same Kano map. Right? So we didn't do full minimization. We did 80% minimization or 75% minimization. Right? Okay. So that's scene A, B bar. All right? 
uh, and we already know this I'm just rewriting this and that's the same as saying a B bar or a bar B and a B and a B bar scene or a bar B scene I'm just expanding there all right and um, let's see what else we can do here all right just make sure you pull a line over here that's a line over there this is reproving the same thing but using boolean algebra right okay so if we now take out a that's b or b bar scene or a bar b scene that's left over and um, b or b bar scene is the same according to the rule of uh, absorption remember absorption yeah that would be the same as just b o scene right and that that side there remains the same um, we expand this again that's a b or a scene or a bar b scene um, then if you look at this that's a b and we can take c and now c and out over here using the distributive property so that's a o a bar b can you see that i've see i've taken the c and out now um a o a bar b according to the um, distributive rule and also the absorption rule we can reduce that that's the scene a o b right um, and after that we just find that that's a b or a well yeah it's starting to look familiar doesn't that look, look familiar now looks like what does it look like what does it look like looks like our original our original equation which is where remember this equation that guy there the one which we started off with the full minimize so uh, what I'm trying to prove here is this is using algebra to prove it eh? okay that hey, that's the same thing so now what we've been able to do is show you that yes this guy here a lot of you guys would have been uh, would have been saying that hey how can we take this guy there is absolutely no way that we can introduce the XO because people will say hey we can see in we can put a C in into A O B but where does the XO come from this is how this is this is what we've done all right now once the XO is in once the XO is in what does that mean once the XO is in guys well basically what the, the, that allows us to do is let's come back to the to the to the to the computer all right is that it allows us to then hook up right to then hook up half headers right and what was the circuit for the half header what did the circuit for the half header look like well there we go that's the circuit for the half header so that circuit sits inside this here all right okay so guys this is the this is the full thing the full deal about half headers um, let me just show you uh, an image um, for bit let's see if I can all right so have a look at this image over here and later on uh, you know after our test when we return from the mid-semester break we will do this um, can you see the first one is a half header right and then the second one this is a four-bit header 
right? Second one, third one, and fourth one are full headers. So we wanted, didn't, didn't want to make separate circuits for full header and half header. We wanted to make lots of half header circuits and just hook it up using, using um, OR gates and so forth. All right, guys. Now, um, let's have a bit of a discussion about our test now. Um, got about 10, 8 minutes to go. All right, so our test coverage will cover everything uh, inclusive of half headers uh, and full headers. But hey, it's, you know, uh, the, the test um, has got to cover the full seven weeks, right? So what we just did in the last two days is only two days out of the seven weeks. So I don't want you to start uh, cramming everything about half headers and full headers because there's other portions of the test as well. Number systems, if you go all the way back to right in the beginning, there were some things on number systems, how we uh, convert numbers between uh, different bases, two's complement, one's complement, all of that. Then we did a lot of work on theorems. Yeah, we did a lot of work on theorems. Uh, I think we covered in the end 13 or 14 different theorems. Uh, D. Morgan's, uh, we covered, uh, you know, absorption, distributive property, consensus. If you remember all those, right? Then we were also applying some of those theorems. Sometimes you are given an equation and then they said, hey, reduce this using Boolean algebra, right? And when you reduced it, you, uh, uh, when you reduce those equations, then what do you do? You, uh, um, you reduce those equations, then there's some questions like in the tutorial, if you remember, that, hey, if each chip costs 20 cents, uh, what is the reduction in the cost of the chips? Do you remember those questions in the tutorial? And also for those of you in class, you'll remember some questions which we, we were looking at, right? Um, about reduction in cost. Um, so yeah, uh, so uh, I, I want you to focus on everything which we've done in the lectures and the tutorials, okay? Lectures and the tutorials. Uh, the theorems are important. Kano maps will be coming. There will be a question on Kano maps. You will be given a question where you have to apply Kano maps. All right? Okay? I won't give you, we, we don't give questions straight up that, hey, this is the Boolean function and you need to draw a Kano map. No. It will be some, some worded question and then you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to decipher that, right? So, uh, worded questions means, uh, okay, there's uh, two, uh, there's three sensors in the room, right? And when two sensors are on, then the security lamp will go on. Right, something like that. Okay, so you have to then, then draw a truth table based on your understanding of the of the particular problem. All right, uh, you have a good. Uh, there's a tutorial on this week, but I think there's a tutorial today. And there's a tutorial tomorrow, right? Is there a tutorial tomorrow? I think. Uh, okay, was there a tutorial yesterday? And there was a tutorial on Monday. Right, there's a tutorial on Monday and okay, so I think there's a group who's doing a tutorial on Friday, I believe. Anybody in the Friday group? Okay, uh, my advice to you is the, uh, Friday is going to be too late. Have a look at the tutorial, all right? Go ahead and have a look at the tutorial for the guys in Friday group because the test is tomorrow uh, and the tutorial helps, all right? Okay, try and complete the tutorial tonight and just, even though there's no tutor around, just, uh, just uh, uh, sit down with some friends. So the questions are generally easy. Right. If you look at the level of problems which we've been doing in our in in our studies in our classes, right, we've been doing some very difficult problems in our lectures, right. And together with the tutorial problems, if you have time, you can then go onto the internet and then look at even more problems to build your skill skill level. Okay, All right. Uh, Fifty minutes, seven questions. Each question has got parts: part A, part B, part C, part A, part B, part C. All right. You got to be fast. Don't waste time in uh, trying to be neat and uh, trying to, don't waste time in, in, in being slow, all right? If you are slow, you lose out because then you also got to move to the next lecture room, which is where? Where? All right, yeah. So, uh, yeah, and that starts at 12, I presume, sharp 12? Okay, all right, okay. So, we'll just have to deal with it uh, like that, all right? So, please be before time please uh, don't waste time in in sitting right close up and if somebody makes a mistake your neighbor makes a mistake just advise them hey you need to make some space because there is a chance that if your neighbor makes a mistake i might move your neighbor or i might move you to give some gap between between each student right there has to
got to be at least one space gap. All right. Okay, one space gap. Okay. Uh, so please be early. Don't, don't don't. We don't want to be spending ten minutes of your time in the thing. The the paper is slightly lengthy. You might have maybe two or four minutes to check your answers. Right. Um, yeah. All right. So you have to be fast. But the questions are easy. The questions are generally the standard of our tutorial and standard of the lecture problems. We did a lot of problems in the lectures. Those students who didn't come to the lectures, they will face immense difficulty. You guys are coming, you'll find it okay because you've seen a lot of those problems before. A lot of the problems which I mentioned verbally, maybe you noted it down. Right? Okay. Thank you.